Yeah. Yeah. He's taking this home. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is really good. I'm I'm assuming you're just gonna use all this footage. Yeah, it's good for the intro. Yeah, there you go. What's going on everybody? Greg here again with Wilson's Orchard and Farm. Uh, back with another video of drinking with your boss. This gentleman right here is Paul Rash. Uh, we are tasting some Midwest ciders today, and I've drug Paul along again because he is a Michigan man, as he maybe won't admit to, but... Of course I will. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are tasting some Midwest ciders, ranging from a uh, rosé to single varietal to spontaneously fermented stuff uh, from Michigan, Illinois, and uh, Minnesota, actually. Mm. First up, we have 2K Farms 2020 Rosé. This one is using an apple that I'm very excited to get to use off our own orchard here called Redfield. It's a red-fleshed apple, but also a variety that I actually haven't heard of called Otterson, I believe. MSU, Michigan State, is they've been on this crash course to do a bunch of stuff with cider apples. And one of the, one of the streams they're working on is this red-fleshed apple thing. So they've got some germplasm that they've been working with. And yeah, I think Otterman is one. I, I, don't remember the names of the other ones, but there's some pretty interesting stuff coming down the pike. Awesome. Yeah, that's a, one thing I'm excited to, to do is play around with these red flesh apples to do, to do more rosés and bring just a different approach to, to cider making. So, should be dry uh, to off dry. Should be some, from fair, some fairly decent, excuse me, uh, fruit notes in there. Maybe even get some uh, watermelon, as they say on the can. I'm just literally reading right off the can. But, got nice nose, really clean. It's a pretty tasty, uh, pretty tasty beverage. Really, yeah, really nice fruit. Yeah. You can get watermelon. Almost as if they just put watermelon Jolly Ranchers yeah. in there, but real bright, clean, fruity, fruity beverage. Yeah, it's great. Really rich. I think the 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 fruit notes are. It's not just watermelon in there. It's just, there's some kind of tropical stuff going on there. Maybe mangoey or pineappley. Um, Really nice, good carbonation. You know, not not in your face, but yeah. uh, appropriate. I would say. I tried to uh, dry it out, or sorry, excuse me. I tried to warm it up for you a little bit. I know you like to drink them a little warm. This might still be a little bit too warm for you, but I mean, it certainly doesn't need any sweetening. And no, it's, uh, it's a little bit. As they say, they have that beautiful little sliding scale mm -hmm. there. For me, it plays a little bit sweeter than than they're saying, but it has that great sharpness on the back, and yeah. that you don't really mind it too much at all. Two K Farms is says family owned business up in Sutton's Bay. Sutton's Bay. So you know, if you meet somebody from Michigan, first thing they're going to do is give you the hand, right? They're going to say, "This is this is where we are." So Sutton's Bay would be right there by the little pinky up there, Traverse City area, and then there's just a really thin peninsula that goes right up into Sutton's Bay. Uh, no, there's a really thin peninsula that goes right up into Traverse Bay, and that makes its own little bay called Sutton's Bay. And um, it's just a little strip of land, and Leelanau Peninsula and Sutton's Bay can grow a lot of fruit that you can't grow even quite a bit south of there because they're really just like engulfed by Lake Michigan, so it really controls the climate. But it's some really... Is it, that's a steady, it's, it's more of a, a less more fluctuation? Steady. Yep. Yep. Okay. Warmer in the winter, cooler in the spring, delayed bloom. Um, I mean, they can grow apricots and stuff like that up there that you know, we're, what, 300 miles south of them and we can't grow them here in Iowa. <laughs> Beautiful product. Yeah, yep. makes for a good season. Gorgeous. Next up, we're leaving Michigan. Uh, don't worry, we will be back in a second, but we are heading over to Minnesota for a uh, Good old bag of cider. Uh, we have Milk and Honey here, uh, their Golden Russet Single Varietal. It is still, it is served in this thing, which actually I think is pretty cool. Um, allows you to take a decent amount of product uh, to share with people on a trip or whatever. And supposedly, yeah, how big is that? That is two... One and a half liters. Holy two crap. bottles of wine for you. Two bottles of wine in a bag. Yeah, hope you did not have any plans. Yeah. Yeah, they're saying that this uh, should give off a bunch of tropical notes. I did not open this one up yet, so uh, I haven't tried it. But um, yeah, so let's uh, let's crack her open. Single varietal. Single varietal. Golden russet. Yep. Golden russet, great apple. You know, um, used to be one of the premier sort of long keepers. Uh, a lot of russets kept well. Um, does well for us. Seem to be 
fairly good annual bearer, um, real weepy tree. Um, does the russeting, what does the russeting do in Appledom? Like what is? Well, so usually accompanying russeting, well, one of the th reasons I've heard that russet apples used to be so um, preferred was number one, they tend to have a really thick kind of gnarly skin. So insects found it hard. Okay. So they weren't as susceptible to critters like Prumculio and things like that. Um, the other thing is russet apples, by and large, were long storage apples. You know, they were winter apples. So you picked them maybe mid to late October and put them in your basement, maybe covered some straw on them, and then they stored, you know, stayed crunchy for a long time. Nice. So russet basically were known for that. I'm going to kill this fly. <laughs> Sorry, sound guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so it is still, if you guys notice, I, I did a little bit of a weird pour on that while Paul was talking. Um, if you do have a still cider, sometimes it helps to do what longer pours. You'll, you'll often see that with Spanish ciders, and that will help uh, aerate the cider a little bit and get more of those volatile compounds, flavor notes and whatnot uh, up into your palate to, to get a nice, better, better slip. Sip, sorry. How'd we do? How'd we do on the, the transit? I was worried when this showed up, it was a little bit bulbous that's one of the downsides of ordering ciders online is is yeah. you got to deal with the transit time and sitting in hot hot uh I'm not trucks. sure this fared super well yeah um certainly not getting tons of tropical notes in my mm -hmm. mind mm -hmm. um it it definitely has that golden russet stamp which is kind of tanniny there there is some tan in there golden mm -hmm. russet does have a little bit of tannin um yeah, it's just kind of flat in the back a little bit. Yeah, chewy. It's a term I like to use when it comes to tannins because you'll leave, you'll sit there and go, mm, yeah, your palate call yeah. it chewy. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely got that. Yeah, and it, I don't know, you know, packaging what it does or you know, uh, you know, this kind of stuff is is fantastically good in terms of portability and stuff like that. Um, but the oxygen barrier and stuff isn't. You know, it isn't a, an aluminum can or even a glass bottle. Yeah, uh, we need to head up to Minnesota and uh, yeah. give it a shot off the tap. Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, it's yeah. it's not it's not bad. I, I don't want to I don't want to send the wrong message here, but it just stale. That's exactly a good term. You know, it, it it's does just, taste a bit stale. It's not yeah. as like bright as as yeah. we, I think it's, we were hoping it's, from yeah. you know having plenty of golden russets. Uh, yeah, before. Because golden russet as an apple, I think, makes great sweet cider, but it also does really interesting stuff um, when you ferment it. I think it 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 has been very unpredictable for us, though. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and if absolutely. It's a lot much air in it. It's not real forgiving. I think. So yeah. Maybe that's what we're seeing here. Yeah. Paul, I think, needs to apologize to a few Michiganders. Yeah. Here. Shit. He was Screwed off by, what, two miles on the peninsula <laughs> yeah, there? Yeah, I, I, uh, I was confusing Sutton's Bay with Old Mission Peninsula, and that's just not, not on. I yeah. mean, it's not on. So this is another Leelanau Peninsula, which is frickin' God's country. If you people have not been to Leelanau Peninsula, you need to go there. It is just beautiful countryside. Yeah. Yep. I was born in Michigan, never been back. Yeah? <laughs> um, need to go back. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we trip. have uh, tandem ciders here. I, they're... Uh, I was going to cheat, but now I'm not. Uh, Ernest, I believe it's called. Gold medal winner dry cider here using a myriad of varieties of apples. Um, some of my favorite being, well, one of my favorite being Dabonet um, that we use here. I believe there was a Roxbury russet in there as well. Which yeah, was there was <coughs> russet. There was, uh, and then some dessert apples, crimson gold, crimson crisp, mm -hmm. honey crisp. Zero residual sugars, so this yeah. should be bone dry and uh, hopefully with a lot color. of I mean, you, you know that thing's going to have some tannins in it with yeah. color like that. Yeah. Well, here we go. Pretty strong tannin. Pretty, you know, it's uh, it's not the soft, rolly tannins. Mm -mm. It's pretty, yeah. pretty strong. And here I'm doing that chewy thing again with those tannins. Just yeah, but. But this time it's kind of washing over you. It's it's a really nice complex of uh, bitter and and uh, sour. There's yep. some nice interplay there of uh, varieties. I, I 
can't remember all the varieties that went into that. Uh, Brown Snout, Dabonet, Crimson Crisp, Russet Beauty, Kilcherman Select Penny Blend. I don't know what that means. Crimson Gold, Swayze Russet, Harrison, Rien de Pomme. Hmm. Famoset, fam, Famoset, Famous, and then there's a Famous, Famoset. Oh, Famoset. And then Honey Crisp. <laughs> and then, you know, Crimson Crisp and Crimson Gold, Honey Crisp, all gonna be on the sweeter side of life. Very nice. Very dry. It was beautiful, darker. So it's got a little fizz yeah. to it. Is it? Yep. Yeah. Not, not overly. Really almost not noticeable until yeah. you think about it. I think that's important when you're personally when you're doing. Um, obviously, it's all personal preference. But when you're doing something that's straight dry, mm. I think carbonating certainly is a way to go. But you don't want to hammer it. Uh, in my experience, you're, it's like drinking uh, club soda or something. Yeah. Like you, you sort of lose all that mouthfeel and. And there's a lot of nuance in this thing. The more the more you drink it, the more... Uh, I think we need to get a little warming plate over here and get it up to like 60 <laughs> degrees and uh, my, have, yeah, my have it really gold. show itself. Yeah. Beautiful color. Good nose. Really uh, progressively better and better. I imagine about five bottles of this down the road you'd be yeah. swirling it. It's, uh, it's what, If you don't do this yet, if you're a cider drinker and, and you're getting into these more call it nuance style ciders, the, um, in, in my opinion, warmer the better because a lot more of that uh, aroma and flavor are gonna show up. The volatiles are gonna start coming off a little bit easier. My favorite thing to do is sit down, crack something open right out of the fridge. If it's a bottle like this, hopefully you have some friends um, or a high tolerance, but just let that, just take your time with it. Don't chug it. This isn't stuff that should be chugged and just sort of see how that develops. If we let this warm up even more, I would have to assume that Dabonet is gonna come out a little bit more um, show off like with Dabonet, you're going to get a lot of spicy notes, even some like dried fruit. I recommend, yeah, take your time when you're when you're drinking these or ciders like these, at least. Definitely a cider to sip and enjoy. It's uh, well crafted, well blended, uh, and really uh, just a, a great product. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Spent enough time in Michigan. Uh, last cider today. We learned from our last tasting video we did together that doing however many we did, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, it was uh, uh, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are not one to dump uh, stuff out. So uh, sticking with four, our last one today uh, here is Overgrown Orchard, their uh, 2020 monument. This is a spontaneously fermented naturally carbonated so they didn't say pet nat but i'm going to take that as pet nat so they're rolling through fermentation and as just before it's done fermenting they're going to put it in the bottle cap it and then the rest of that fermentation is going to give that uh the effervescence to that to that drink to the bottle i should say gold rush an apple we are very familiar with and that we love dearly, we love dearly. 12 months in uh, in wine barrels like with most uh pet nats you're going to get a little bit of sediment on the bottom just like that I highly recommend giving the bottle a little bit of a swirl gently um, just to get that sediment up and that yeast up back into the liquid. Also, if you do this aggressively, you're gonna have a, a mess on your hands, which we might have, who knows. Let's give it a shot. I'm excited for this one. Um, out of Illinois slash Indiana, I believe they're orchards in Gary, Indiana, and they sort of operate out of the, the Chicagoland area. And it's got Wine sap and golden russet in it too. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah. So it seems not too lively. Yeah, that's a, with with a lot of pet nets, I like to open slowly. It's often they will go surprise everywhere. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go. I'm excited All for right. this one. And this did well at Glen Cap. Best I believe show, so. Or? I'll have to look that up. Uh, I believe it was a it it won a, a very least a gold medal. If I'm wrong in that, I apologize. A lot of times with spontaneously fermented, um, so what that means if you don't know is, is basically they're just taking the yeast that are on the fruit at the time of pressing and letting, letting it do its thing. If you've been around me at all in the last year, I won't really shut up about it because it's something that we're, a program that we're messing around with a little bit that I'm pretty excited for. But with that comes maybe some challenging flavors for the general palate. Uh, you're gonna get usually a little more funkiness um, penning your microflora, it's all pennant on your area. Uh, it's one of the reasons why sourdoughs are so good in San Francisco, right? They're, the, the yeast in the air there just has a natural, more souring effect to it. This one has a lot going on on the nose. Mm -hmm. I, 
I got a big schnoz, so I do a lot with the nose. This is another one that you're gonna. I think you you you'll you'll do better by letting it warm up a little bit, yeah. and, and it's gonna uh, show itself in different ways as you as you drink it. This is yeah. I think this would be very challenging for a lot of people, a lot of our consumers. I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Um, it's got a lot of what you would taste in say. Uh, Normandy and France, uh, some of the English ciders would have some of this going on, but yeah, there's just a lot of notes that come from that spontaneous fermentation that's just, it's delightful. It's really if good. If you're ready for it, you know, yeah. if, if, if yeah. you're there. Um, but, you know, a, a white wine drinker tasting this would say, wow, there's something, there's something, something wrong, wrong yeah. with that. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. But mm. it's really, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, Natural carbonation is gorgeous. And, and so one of the interesting things about this to me is it's made with three essentially dessert apples, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So you got golden russet and gold rush, both of which have slight tannins to them, mm -hmm. and wine sap. Wine sap, old school, you know, long keeper. All three are long keeper apples. Um, so what you get from this is not so much a, a you know, a, a good strong tannin blast you get this kind of you know it's more about the yeast isn't it it's mm -hmm. just really about what that yeast is delivering and it's these slightly funky cider flavors you know yeah. some people call it old horse or you know I mean, there's lots straw, of different like, yeah, straw just, yeah. you know different stuff that comes through on this and you know if you're a, a true blue cider guy gal whatever uh this is this is worth drinking yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this one over here. Uh, sorry, Alexander. I'm not sure if there's gonna be much left over for you. Yeah. Tapio. I, I know it's been that. it's been a good week, but it's been a long week. We're it has. I for mean, those who don't know, we're in the middle of. Uh, I guess in terms of the orchard staff, probably right smack in the middle of harvest. Uh, for yeah. the beverage team, we are sort of in the middle. October's our uh, October gets pretty crazy for us. Boom when time. We're, yeah, yep. when we're talking uh, pressing apples. Uh, the reason I look so disheveled uh, is I know you're concerned out there, but I uh, had a 16-hour day on the press yesterday just just making sure we have sweet juice for people. But what a nice little treat here to catch. This is a treat. This is like there. dessert. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, true blue. The, the, again, that, that natural carbonation is just such a nice adjunct to this cider. It's a lot softer on, on the carbonation, like, if you're drinking, like if you compare this to say, you know, let's just uh, Goldfinch, right? Yeah. You know, we, we, we carbonate to a very specific point and, and it happens relatively quickly. And yeah, it's, it's got a sharp, there's a sharp bite that brings to it. Uh, the carbonation, you can almost rely on it to, to have an effect on the palate. It's almost this, like a separate flavor, that kind yeah, of carbonation. Whereas exactly. this is like... It's a nice bubbly. There's a nice, in the bottle, there's a nice what we like to call crown yeah. or mousse in the cider world. Um, you're never going to get the head that a beer has in cider. We don't have the proteins, but when you know you've done carbonation well is is around the rim of the glass There's there's a little bit of a bead of bubbles and we call that the crown or the or the mousse yep. And that's that's you happening right there. That. right there the moose the Let the moose loose cheers this cheers lovely all right, folks, uh, that'd, be, uh, that'd be it for today. Thanks for watching. Um, I know you're tired of uh, this gentleman uh, to my right here. Uh, we have a few more episodes planned out with, believe it or not, other people in the company uh, that we'll be sipping cider with. We're gonna travel around the country, do, do a few select uh, ciders from each, uh, we'll call it region, with a few, few different folks, and it's gonna be a fun time. So thanks for watching, and, and look forward to seeing you again.